Like Queen Victoria and John Brown, Nixon and Frost, Luke and Leia, and the entire Lannister family, my relationship with Lost Legends is... complicated. The name itself is apropos, considering it's been all but abandoned by its company and creator. A supposed expansion was released, but has become nearly impossible to find. I like Lost Legends. On the condition it be played employing alternative rules. Forcing me to admit that by doing so it does force the question that should someone praise a game that must be homebrewed to be enjoyed? I'll first describe the rules as defined in print, and let you decide. Lost Legends presents itself as a classic dungeon delve, where the exploration aspect has been removed and reduced like a red wine sauce to focus just on the monsters that require vanquishing. If that sounds familiar, you'd be correct. So let's take a quick diversion to examine another game that's both thematically and mechanically similar. The Bloodborne Card Game. Sorry. I mean, Bloodborne the Card Game where exploration has also been removed, leaving only the task of defeating monsters revealed upon the turning over of a card. A player's character possesses no real identity. Their tableau is a simple trophy tracker. The mechanic is like two other games, Mission Red Planet and Century Spice Road. Each player selects and reveals a card, reducing one's hand, repeating the process until forced to retreat temporarily from the battle to reacquire cards already played. Bloodborne is a semi-cooperative game, though the cooperative element is deceptive. I wouldn't call it cooperative at all. To me, a, a cooperative game should feature a fail-state player's share. Bloodborne really doesn't have any condition like that, and despite needing to kill a monster together, it is by no means a cooperative experience. Players will often deceive and trick other players to maximize their points at the expense of others. As we transition back to Lost Legends, we can start to notice where the games diverge. The trophy tracker has been replaced by a fully realized character board, with distinctive art, but truthfully only minor variations in abilities. There are tokens indicating maximum hit points and mana, and cubes denoting where those values have been reduced to. There's an indicator for experience acquired that will also adjust your score at the end of the game. Finally, there's a value indicating starting gold. Instead of a hand-building mechanic, Lost Legends employs card drafting. Instead of the entire group facing off against one monster, each player faces off against one each. Lost Legends does not conceal the fact it is competitive. Ironic, considering that unlike Bloodborne, Lost Legends features few cards that can hurt other or harm other players. In fact, there's only one. So exclusive an exception, its very inclusion is a mystery and a common removal from friendlier games. A game of Lost Legends is set up rather quickly. Six gear cards per player, three monsters per player, with the game designed for three to five players. Monsters and gear are tied to the round, with each successive round having increasingly powerful gear and, and monsters. Like Bloodborne, there's no visual cue to indicate characters are moving through a landscape, but at least with Lost Legends we have the il illustration on the backs of cards to indicate where the players are, Ruins, Caves, or Demon Fortress. There are also stacks of point tokens that operate identically to those seen in Lanterns. We'll get to those in exactly 323 words. The first stage, the gearing phase, is where the card draft is utilized. Each player selects one card face down, reveals it, and adds it to his or her character card. A common procedure with unnecessary steps. The selecting, placing face down, and simultaneously revealing wastes time considering that the revealed card doesn't affect other characters in any way. The selected card can then be added to the board in one of two ways. The first is to pay its listed cost and add it to one of the four spots indicated by its match symbol. I love this aesthetic touch. Aiding in a visual cue as well as being mechanically important, only three cards can be placed in each spot, no identical items or matching types of weapons or armor. You cannot wield two swords or wear two helmets. Alternately, you can rotate the card around and slip it under the board adding it as a skill. Skills offer no benefits on their own, but possessing skills can reduce the cost of certain gear, and they can also increase the damage of certain weapons later in the game. Additionally, by turning a card into a skill, you also receive gold based on your current round, one for one, two for two, three for three. After a card is selected and placed, the remaining ca uh, cards uh, are shifted clockwise to the next player, 
and the process repeats until the final two, where one card is selected and the last discarded. Thus starts the combat phase. At the beginning, each player is given one monster face up in front of their board. A random player begins the first round. So the player attacks first, selecting one weapon and damage type to inflict, hopefully enough damage to kill the monster. If successful, the card is rotated, not unlike a skill, and placed on the right side of the board. Admittedly, this can get a bit tricky. A mat or a tablecloth is advised here. These trophies are one critical way to acquire points. If these trophies match any of the listed stacks, you can claim one of these trophy tokens. Like I mentioned regarding lanterns, each one claimed reveals another identical point token of lesser value. Each player can claim each stack only once. There's also a hot potato style token uh, going to the player with the most trophies of a single type. Hold on to this token by the end of a turn for an additional bonus. Monsters also drop gold. You don't receive this total prize, only part of it. Forced to share it with others. Sentable in a cooperative game, but an odd inclusion in a competitive one. Some creatures can be resistant or vulnerable to attack, so you may be faced with a creature you have little to no capacity to kill. After you attack, the monster counters, inflicting damage you are hoping to resist. You can do so via magic, armor, or both. If you survive, you can try again on your next turn, but play moves on to the next player. If a monster is in front of your character, you can elect to shift it to the first player clockwise without a creature in front of his or her character board. If you are unable to fight off the creature, it does run away after two turns. However, if it does reduce you to zero hit points, well... It's just a flesh wound. What actually happens is this. You are knocked out for the rest of the turn. Any monsters you could not defeat can now be revealed and defeated by other players, potentially increasing experience and the number of trophies for them. To kick you while you're down, you also lose one of your skill cards. At the end of the round, character, uh, characters reset all ability cards, return both mana hit points to their maximum value, and the process repeats for gear and combat for rounds two and three. At the end of the game, where your experience sits affects your final score, as does your trophy tokens, and finally, who amassed the most and second most gold receives additional points. Now, listening to that 938 word rant would lead one to note the obvious flaw in this system. If knocked out early in the round, not only do other players gain more experience for defeating monsters meant for you, but you also lose a skill as well. This could be through no choice of your own, as on the first turn you can be saddled with a creature able to hurt you without proper defenses and be resistant to any attack you may inflict. Understandably frustrating. And though it is, it is not impossible to catch up to the leaders, your chance of victory is greatly reduced if ever knocked out. In fact, during our set of test games, anyone knocked out, though not always the last place, never threatened the ultimate victor. The lack of any catch-up mechanic appears a notable misstep, magnified by the revelation that the game's creator had intended to include one. This brings up an interview Mike Elliott, said creator, uh, had with a relatively obscure and unknown YouTuber by the name of Tom Vasil. Vais uh, Tom. It was during a podcast exchange where, when Mr. Elliot revealed the truth. Originally, there were some a few catch-up features, and the the German playtesters thought that it should be more skill testing, so they kind of stripped a couple of of those things out. Uh, like originally, if you were uh, knocked out, you were out for one turn, and then then you got resurrected. And they're like, "What?" Well, and you didn't. You also didn't lose a skill. And like they're like, well, not only should you get knocked out, you should lose a skill. I'm like, okay, uh, you, you guys was kind of being positioned for a harder style of game, so I, I kind of deferred to them on a couple of those things. Uh, if I'd been doing it with a U.S. publisher, I might have pushed back and said, well, you, you should probably let the players get back in each round. But a, a few decisions were made, kind of for well, interesting. Now we know the the an official variant. I suppose <laughs> we can use. Yeah, you could certainly like. A, uh, you could certainly just have when you get knocked out, you're just out for a turn. And uh, there's also, uh, I'd also did a co-op variant that I'll probably post at some, which is basically like everyone, you have to not let anyone die and everyone has to get a certain number of trophies each. I always knew it would come down to the Germans. Seriously, though, it's surprising such a catch-up system was removed and bothers them still that Mr. Elliot has not followed through. There's never been an either an Unofficial or official rules variant or patch. No errata, leading me to compile Elliot's comments with the suggestions of social media, along with my own ideas into the variation my friends and I currently play with. 
Here they are in order of play. 1. The Trade When dealing with a random shuffle, a player may end up inevitably stuck with bad cards. There are two solutions that can solve this, uh, this issue, in my humble opinion. The first is the trade. At the end of the card draft, players can trade cards. With three characters, two cards can be traded between two players. With four characters, three, and with five, it's four. Trade cards turned into skills do not offer additional gold, and gold must still be spent to equip a card. Number two, the flop. Instead of discarding the last card, all players place their last cards face up for all to see. The player with the lowest experience can take one card from the flop and equip it or turn it into a skill. This process continues until all the cards are equipped. If on round one or if there are ties, the character with the fewest actual equipped gear cards goes first. If tied again, the one with the fewest gold and so forth and so forth. If it's still a tie, uh, rock, paper, scissors. And like before, this, this, this repeats with every round. Number three, monster choice. Being forced to fight the first monster feels unnecessary. Thus, during the first round, each player selects a monster just as normal play. Select either the face-up monster or select a face-down card blind. Uh, you do not get uh, one monster immediately in front of your card at the beginning of a, of a round. Number four, defend. It's strange that a game attempting to replicate a dungeon delve would not include a choice to defend. Thus, I'm suggesting the addition of a defend action, which can be selected instead of the attack action. You activate no cards during this action, but all your defenses, regardless of the value, increase by a value equal to the round number. Also, you receive 1 XP, because learning not to die is an important skill to learn. Number 5. Death. As per Miller, Mr. Elliot's suggestions, death is no longer permanent. On your turn, if you are unable to take either an attack or defend action due to being knocked out, your mana and health return to their maximum, and you stand up ready to fight at the beginning of your next turn. Turn cards remain so. This wording is specific because if you were killed at the beginning of a monster draw phase, you are not knocked out for two turns. Also, each turn you miss out taking either the defend or attack action, you also receive one experience point. Six. Mind tap. This a card, as mentioned previously, does appear to stand out. Thus, it does not activate the other player's ability when employed. Number seven, experience. As stated, if you do anything but an attack on your turn, you gain one XP. Additionally, when you level up, you gain two of the listed bonuses instead of one. Number eight, co-op. All right, this was a fun one. It was an interesting challenge because monsters are, are a one-on-one -one -one affair. And Mr. Elliot's suggestions of achieving a certain number of trophies feels, well, dumb. I want a cooperative game to have a tangible win condition that feels thematic over just achieving a set number of points or a set number of trophies. The objective is to survive the dungeon without anyone dying. So taking a cue from Bloodborne will need, a cooperative, uh, will need cooperative fighting as well as some nasty bosses. So those hot potato tokens, we'll use those in a second. But instead, sort the trophy tokens as follows. Remove the three pair and the one of each token. We won't be using those, leaving just the two pair tokens. Grab one of each of the lowest point tokens. They're reserved for round one. The second lowest for round two, and the rest is round three. Drop the tokens in a cup and shuffle them up. At the beginning of a combat round, reveal one random token. When a monster matching that type is revealed, that token is given to that monster. The point value is added to the monster's hit points. For round one, this adds two hit points except for the dragon, which adds four. When a token is assigned to a monster, remove the next token, and so on. In round two, add the next set of tokens to the cup. Leftover tokens from round one can remain, but this time you draw two tokens. If the tokens are the same, the higher value is assigned first. Finally, add the remaining tokens for round three and draw three tokens instead of two. As this game does not track points, characters do not get resurrected after one turn. You are knocked out for that round. However, you still gain experience for every turn you remain out, as well as gold, just as normal. Monsters do not retreat, and after a second round attacking the same character, another monster must be played. So best shuffle a monster to another character or be overwhelmed. Regardless of the number of monsters in front, a player can only attack one, but on the counterattack, suffers damage from all. 
If a character is defeated, the monster shifts to the next character clockwise, unless there's a creature already there, that two, that, that two turn limit still applies. They basically wait in limbo. It does not run away though. And when defeated, boosted monsters offer their XP to all players that inflicted damage. XP and gold rewards all increase by one. Players can also activate any abilities at any point to help others. Survive all three rounds to win the game. Number nine, two players. To play Lost Legends as two players involves borrowing a mechanic used in another card drafting game, Among the Stars. Wow, I'm just all over the name dropping today. The irony is that the rule in question was not initially offered in the rule book, but rather a fan submitted variation that found itself in a later edition. Credit goes to Kim Williams for this one. Set aside all the gear cards for four players. Each player then draws six cards. Before every turn, including the first one, each player draws an additional card from the deck. Both players then choose one card from their hand and one to discard. Then they pass the remaining cards to the other player. All the other rules proceed as normal. In conclusion, Lost Legends is made well, and despite not having emotions, like myself, I believe it means well. It's just unfortunate his creator did not stick to his guns and deliver the game that would have satisfied everyone. It's also unfortunate the game has been kicked to the side of the road with no support given to address consumer concerns. My group enjoys the version of Lost Legends not contained in this box, but rather the one contained in our imaginations. The mechanics are there to play with, so have fun. This is Chris from DSX Machina.